That is a big boat right there. I'm on a smaller boat, on a ferry, across the fjord here from my hometown to the neighbor town, Wallisund, uh, where I'm gonna buy a machine upgrading my garage. Some pretty nice bikes here as well on the ferry, but of course I need to travel by car because I need to bring along my machine, which is quite uh, big, 75 kilos. I normally buy these uh, budget options when it comes to machines and equipment to my garage. Not so much this time. I'm spending a bit more and hopefully getting a bit more of a quality machine this time. Very excited. Half an hour now on this ferry, then uh, one hour drive. Yeah, listening to some radio perhaps in the meantime. Here I am. Hello. I think I better take the camera. I think somewhere here is my machine. Oh, there you are. You got my machine. Of course we have. Excellent. Let's yes. find it. Yep. Let's find it. I might have to come back here. So much cool machines here. Back on the ferry, almost home, and the sun lit up. Delicious. Had to park uh, almost up on the second floor this time. That's okay. Next, garage. Unboxing. And finally, I'm back in my garage, ready to unbox my dream machine. I've been wanting uh, to buy a machine like this for years. And finally, here it is in my garage. And you might already have noticed uh, the label here, what it is. 
I did a bit of research before I ended up buying this uh, Holtzmann lathe. I did not want to buy the cheapest uh, lathes uh, I could find. I've seen the reports that, uh, yeah, they're not that reliable. Uh, and some of them even needs to be improved, upgraded or repaired before you can even use them. Also, I wanted to have a lathe with a digital reader on the axis. I think this uh, Holtzmann brand is a perfect fit for me. It's a step up in quality and a step up in price, but uh, not too crazy expensive uh, within my budget. And um, it was actually me who contacted uh, Tritec, the reseller of Holzman here in Norway, asked if we could uh, cooperate. And uh, to my surprise, they said, uh, oh, they said yes. But I didn't get this machine for free. It's an expensive machine, but I got a discount. A decent discount. And uh, that helped me enough and convinced me that, uh, to go for it. And uh, in return, I want to make uh, this video and a couple more videos, at least, where I get to uh, yeah, experience this machine and um, getting started with a lathe for the first time. Me, I'm a beginner when it comes to lathes. And I hope you will follow along in my journey and I'll tell you both the good and the bad things about it. And maybe you can... Uh, learn together with me how to operate a machine like this and if you are interested as well maybe this could be a machine you could consider ooh, 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 ooh. exciting 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 <laughs> okay look at this uh, upside down uh, back ways let me turn it around this is what you get. Hmm. User manual. Actually a toolbox, some equipment down here. Everything seems to be tied down. I think I'll take off the side panels. Okay, are we... No, wait a second. This plate is loose. I think it's the bottom plate. This looks nice. This looks nice. A toolbox with something, something. This, I think, is the digital display, yes. So, uh, what I've seen from pictures, it's supposed to be like this. I have a challenge as well. My, uh, my workshop isn't too big, so uh, I have an idea where to put it. But I have a limited height, so I can probably not put this here. I probably need to mount it uh, lower down. Let's see how that goes, but uh, yeah, Ooh -hoo, this is fun. So, my first impression after unboxing, very positive. The crate, solid, uh, the lathe is bolted to the bottom here, and uh, no damage. The user manual, I've taken a look at it, about uh, approximately 40 pages in English, and really English as well, not like a bad translation, and with the images, and very well explained. Yeah, looks promising, I'm not used to that. The machines I have bought, yeah, barely a one-pager with a small typo, you can almost not read it, but uh, yeah, this one was very nice. The first thing I need to do is, of course, to clean it. It's very oily, and uh, that's to avoid rust, probably. So I need to clean everything, and these uh, protection panels, what I've seen all YouTubers who make videos with LED, they take this off. They are probably smart for protection, but uh, not very smart when you're going to record what you're doing. So yeah, I think uh, at least uh, I will take them away now while I'm doing the cleaning. Maybe you can tell, I'm very excited. Yep, cleaning.
The machine is uh, washed and uh, most of the parts as well. Only this gear is uh, remaining. I must say the user manual doesn't say anything about taking these parts uh, off the machine for cleaning. It just say clean the machine, but I think you need to do it to get uh, yeah, in between all of uh, the spots to get away this uh, uh, grease that is painted on. Yeah, and it was pretty quickly, not many bolts to take this apart. The manual says, however, take apart the shock. At least if I read the manual correctly, it says how to take it apart and what to do. And I noticed this gear in the center of the chuck has a lot of blue paint that is shipping off. And it also was quite difficult to get out. So this is the only piece I have been struggling a bit to get out. And I need to deburr to get off this uh, edge. Um, so that is probably why it was stuck in there. I have used my file to go over all the edges but uh, there wasn't really any more sharp edges except for this one By the way, this is plastic. I wish this could have been metal as well, aluminium or something. You can see I washed away the paint there. Yeah. Well, well, it isn't that important. Before I put on the shock, I think I'll measure this one, see how accurate it is. This uh, micrometer, is that the right name? It measures 0.01 millimeters. Okay, I have dialed it in. Let me start turning. Quarter, half, huh. full, maybe a half. 0 0.005 it seems to be quite uh, accurate and you're probably very curious what's inside this toolbox well here it is these are the gears that uh, decide the speed on the lead screw that's what's moving the lathe back and forth i noticed these uh, connectors used to put uh, two of the gears uh, side by side they are a bit tall I actually had to file off approximately one millimeter. This is for uh, controlling opening and closing the chuck, and this is for putting on the, the cutting tools. Not sure what this is for. I think it has something to do with the gearing. And then some heavy duty professional screwdrivers, Allen key set, wrenches. This one goes in the tail stock, and this goes uh, instead of the chuck if you want to turn in between of points. These are some extra to the chuck. It's like reversed uh, to hold uh, stuff together differently. And the oil can. I'm really sorry. I don't even know what all of this stuff is called. But uh, I know enough to get started and I plan to learn more. And I also know that I need some cutting irons to get started. So I bought this kit. 
So this is a kit with the different types of carbide cutting tools. I've already fitted two of them on the lathe. Let's take a look. And um, here you can see I have put on my own self-made um, arm to hold the display as well. So I can move it like this for uh, storage. And when I'm going to use it, I can put it wherever I want it. Put on the truck, even a test piece. The only thing now is to put the table over to where I plan to keep the lathe. Okay, this is not a precision tool, but it uh, seems to be decently in uh, level. I've done some research before I'm uh, starting. Gloves, you're not supposed to wear gloves when operating a lathe, because these can grab the hook into something and yeah, not a pretty sight, probably. However, eye protection, especially since I have removed the original protection hair, and uh, oil protection, because what happens now when I'm going to start up this for the first time, and I've oiled this, it's a lot of thin oil in here, and when this starts, it will uh, yeah, pour out something also. I'm just going to keep this here at the start to avoid getting too much oil in my face. Plugging in for first time. Nothing happens. Still nothing happens. It wasn't powered on. By the way, I forgot to tell you, I made an upgrade already. I saw some tips that uh, protecting um, this part, I don't know what it's called, this glider to avoid getting too much uh, metal debris ships uh, down here. I just uh, found this rubber mat that I attached to this um, pretty easy. Nothing happens. I need to read the user manual. Sorry about that. Just uh, tucking away, uh, cleaning up the power cords. Here. Yes, uh, sorry, I should have read the user manual. <laughs> it's pretty. Pretty simple, really. Uh, so what you're going to do is uh, select uh, forward or reverse here. I take forward. Then press the power on button. And then you set the speed. That was the first run. Not sure about the uh, sound. It seems to... Yeah, maybe I need to check if I need to oil some more of the gearing or something. Third attempt. Listen now. That is smooth. What I did, I disconnected the gearing for the lead screw. I think I put on the gears a bit tight, so they were colliding. So I need to practice a bit and figure out how to probably adjust the gearing for, for this man. That means that this is now turning, so this will not work now to click it into gear to run it automatically. Now I have to operate it by hand. That's fine. That's recommended. Anyway, first time you test out, don't use anything automatic. Get the feel of it as it is. According to the instruction manual, this should now be running at low speed for 20 minutes to make sure the motor and everything is uh, working properly. So, 
let's just wait 20 minutes. Okay, Google, stop timer. 20 minutes. Everything is working perfectly. Sure, 20 minutes. Starting now. Uh, no, cancel timer. Okay, cancel. I think I'll do a very small test. I would like to see how um, precise, accurate the shuck is um, compared to the tail stock they should meet up 100%. That is why I put in this steel bar, because I will try one small cut here, make a chamfer at the end, see if... Uh... So this uh, was a bit low, so I'm trying to shims it up with uh, putting a one millimeter steel sheet metal underneath here to rise it a bit. Testing two of those. And that was me turning on a lathe for the first time ever. And I would say somewhat of a success. At least I managed to make this uh, pointy little thing. And the reason for it is to check if uh, my tail stock, that's the name of this uh, tail piece, hits exactly on uh, against the shock. And it didn't. It barely, almost, nearly did, but there are some adjustment screw here. So just a 5mm um, Allen uh, hex key. And uh, now you can see if this is accurate, this piece will stay perfectly flat. Almost, at least. I'm not sure how perfect this is, but uh, if it was out of sync, it would have flipped. So I would say this is quite good uh, alignment, these two pointy bits there. I have to say this was great fun, but uh, I do think I have a lot to learn. And uh, if you're waiting for a conclusion about uh, me recommending or saying something good or bad, it's too soon because I'm not experienced. But you can see what I managed to fabricate today as my first uh, a turning job. Not too shabby, was it? This is just a random piece of metal I had laying around, probably mild steel. Yeah, but uh, anyway, this is a memory for me. I have done some research, however, looked up on other YouTube channels what they typically have experienced when it comes to mini lades. And I must say, this lade has a lot of features that others don't have. Here is a list. Upgrades that others typically has mentioned that they have done or wanted to do on their lathe. It has been like adding lubrication ports to the lathe that's included here. Uh, the gears, they are metal, uh, not plastic as it is on a lot of uh, the cheaper uh, lathes. The lead screw has cover. You know, if ships are falling into this, it will, of course, cause problem. So uh, this is a very smart uh, solution. A lot of the lathes, they don't have these uh, rotating handles. These are very nice, so it makes it much easier to move the wheels when you have uh, not these kind of fixed handles. Carriage lock is uh, supposed to be very useful when you are 
doing the cut that way. Here are some uh, bolts to lock the carriage so it uh, cannot move. The tailstock is easy to lock with this lever. Some have just a screw and a bit more cumbersome to lock it. And of course, the digital readout is so nice. I can just uh, zero it out and when I move it's much easier to see on the display instead of have to count here to figure out uh, how much uh, the movement is. And I have seen others also have replaced their motor because it's too small. Uh, the smallest lathes has just 300, 350 watts motor. This has 450. It isn't that much bigger, but it can run up until 630 watts for shorter periods. If you have a heavy load, um, a maximum four minutes out of 10 minutes, then it needs to cool down. So the motor should be a bit more powerful here than the smallest one. Also, a lot of complaints from the uh, cheaper lathes that they are not rigid enough. This one is 77 kilo. The smallest one is normally just 40. I have bolted it to my quite sturdy metal table, so everything now is more than 100 kilo here. It feels sturdy and safe. But of course, uh, this lathe can also be upgraded. There are a lot of uh, things that can be improved, and the Holzman actually sells some of the upgrades. The first thing I might look at is this uh, quick uh, change uh, tool post. Instead of this where you have to use these uh, three bolts uh, to lock the cutting tool into it, it's possible to buy a quick release mechanism, just slide it in and lock it into place. Also others do just remove this whole piece because it might be a bit wobbly. So just having a fixed, uh, a solid uh, post here to put the tool on makes it more rigid. Well, that's all from me today. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little time together with me in the garage. And maybe you can uh, drop in later when I uh, do a follow-up video. Hopefully I have some more experience next time. And maybe I know what uh, the different parts are named as well. Can't promise anything. And if you have any question, or a suggestion, or if I did something totally wrong, please let me know in the comments below. Hope to see you again. Bye bye.